You know about the, the Brits, the Jesuits, the aliens, the lizards? Reptilian side of our brain. Uh, but when I think of Obama, I think of... Contrary to the rumors that you've heard, I was not born in a manger. I was actually born on crypto and sent here to save the planet Earth. Why did he start running for president? Why did Eric start running for president? Um, I got uh, hit in the head with a rock. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so now, when I woke up, I'd made my announcement. I, and, and then it was too late. Now, One of the I, reasons why Barack Obama is so popular, especially among younger people, is that he seems so real. He seems to acknowledge the reality of things. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. Everybody somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25 will serve three months of basic training. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong. Yes, we can. Obama's South Carolina plan will include coverage of all essential medical services. Yes, we can. Obama is a cruel hoax. He works for Wall Street. He's an agent of finance capital. Where did you come up with the number $700 billion? Here's the uh, Treasury spokeswoman's quote. It's not based on any particular data point. We just really wanted to come up with a really big number. To Democrats and Republicans... Who that was Republican and Democratic, conservative and liberal economists that I spoke to, who indicated that given the magnitude of the crisis and the fact that it's happening worldwide... Tell them not to manufacture another needless standoff or crisis. Hi, how are you? The five living presidents. Some might call it a power lunch, but it sounded more like a reunion of brothers, the older ones supporting the newest and youngest Barack Obama. We want you to succeed. Whether we're Democrat or Republican, uh, we care deeply about this country. This is an extraordinary gathering. Uh, all the gentlemen here understand both the pressures and possibilities of this office. Mr. Obama's office says he plans to stay in touch with all of the former presidents. Thanks, guys. It's a small club. Barack Obama becomes one of just 44 U.S. presidents when he's inaugurated. If you delay acting on an economy of this severity, then you potentially create a negative spiral that becomes much more difficult for us to get out of. No one watching at first knew quite what was going on. It happened during the oath of office when I Chief Justice John Roberts of the U.S. Supreme Court recited the oath without notes. He decided to wing it, and he got it wrong. President Obama, who's a former law professor himself, corrected him, but it still wasn't said the right way. If there was any tension between the two men in the air, it could have been because Obama voted against Roberts' confirmation for the job. Now, fast forward to today when Vice President Biden was preparing to read the oath of office to swear in members of the senior White House staff, he couldn't resist a dig at the Chief Justice. My memory is not as good as Justice Roberts. Chief Justice Roberts. Does, does anyone have the... No, I... You will note the president pointedly kept a straight face throughout. There was some speculation today because they got the oath wrong yesterday. President Obama somehow isn't legally president and should take the oath again to be sure. But constitutional experts say that's just wrong. We are no longer a Christian nation, at least not just. We are also a Jewish nation, a Muslim nation, and a Buddhist nation and a Hindu nation, and a nation of non-believers. And Reverend Wright, uh, uh, my pastor, who I, I speak about in a chapter in the book, I think represents the best of what uh, the black church has to offer. ...student loans, and was accepted at one of the nation's most prestigious law schools, Harvard. The political environment on the law school campus in the late 80s and early 90s was, was borderline toxic. One of my most poignant memories of the law review election process was late in the process, it's late at night, we're trying to figure out how to resolve this thing. Clearly Barack has a lot of support, but it's not resolved yet. And 
a conservative editor who probably disagreed with just about everything that Barack stood for got up and said that he was firmly behind Barack because we were a divided institution. This was the best person to lead the institution and to reach out to all constituencies, even though he had his own political views and made them known. Just after midnight, he won. It was national news. Oh, I'm honored, and I think people can say that my election symbolizes some progress, at least in, within the small confines of the legal community. I think it's real important to keep the focus on uh, the, the broader world out there and, and see that uh, uh, for a lot of kids, uh, the doors that have been open to me aren't open to them. He would return to Chicago to write a book, to teach law, and to return to the streets. In my mind, there's no doubt he would have ended up with a Supreme Court clerkship, but he turned his back on that and saw himself running separate from the pack even back then. Do you believe that President Obama is a puppet of the CIA, as you've suggested? A puppet of the CIA? I didn't suggest that. Let me play a clip to you. What you're saying is Barack Obama was a CIA agent? He was what they call a CIA asset. He was enrolled in the early 1980s by Zvenu Brzezinski. Mr. Brzezinski is the head of the Trilateral Commission and... Good evening. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of al-Qaeda. Yeah, we're still giving out flyers on 9-11 and stuff like that, and the Osama bin Laden. To me, he's been dead for quite a number of years now. Died of his disease, you know. Because what they did on the, the second was a uh, fable. Just as President Bush did shortly after 9-11, that our war is not against Islam. Bin Laden was not a Muslim leader. He was a mass murderer of Muslims. That wasn't him. Some guy in, the, in Pakistan was uh, interviewed by the media there and said that guy was his neighbor. He claims the man in the picture is his neighbor. His name is Akbar Khan. He owns the house, they said, was Osama's house. I know him very well. It's funny, when you look at it, it has him holding a remote control in his right hand. Bin Laden is left-handed. There's a giveaway right there. An image the White House wants the world to see. Apparently a disheveled and much diminished Osama bin Laden watching himself on TV. The footage was edited by the Pentagon and released without sound. It's said to be one of five videos found in bin Laden's compound. So they said that, that, he, uh, that bin Laden uh, put his wife uh, as a as shield. That turned out to be a lie. I can tell you about it, I'm sure. Officials say the president didn't see the shooting in the White House feed during the raid. There's also doubt over claims that women were used as human shields in the compound. The White House now says a woman rushed toward one of the Americans when he entered bin Laden's room and was shot in the leg. I determined that we had enough intelligence to take action and authorized an operation to get Osama bin Laden and bring him to justice. Today, at my direction, the United States launched a targeted operation against that compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan. A small team of Americans carried out the operation with extraordinary courage and capability. No Americans were harmed. I believe that when you become aware of fraud and deceit, and you do nothing to expose it, then you become complicit in that fraud and deceit. I discovered a lot of shocking information that was being concealed from the public. The president has just announced that we have caught and compromised to a permanent end Osama bin Laden. Yeah.
proud to be an American. TorontoTruthSeekers.com That we had located bin Laden hiding within a compound deep inside Pakistan. I traveled to Pakistan when I was in college. While attending a San Francisco fundraiser last April, Obama mentioned a three-week trip he took with Hamid to Pakistan and India, which included a visit with Chandu's family. He was 20 years old at the time. Why he wouldn't return our phone calls and Chandu declined to discuss it as well. The campaign did not elaborate on our questions, but referred us to an April Newsweek interview in which Obama said, part of the most memorable portion was seeing what was essentially a feudal life. You had peasants who were still functioning as indentured servants. But it's important to note that our counterterrorism cooperation with Pakistan helped lead us to bin Laden and the compound where he was hiding. Let this guy spout off that President Obama is a member of the CIA. Can you say he's not? Yes, he's not. Never was. He's not. How do you know that? Just call it a gut feeling, Jesse. When Let's George take another Bush short was, break. When Jesse. George Bush was made vice president. I need to the patriotism and extraordinary management skills that have defined Leon's four decades of service is exactly what we need in our next Secretary of Defense. As a former congressman and White House chief of staff, Leon knows how to lead which is why he is held in such high esteem, not only in this city, but around the world. Uh, and uh, I hope you don't have a clock. <laughs> uh, I'm also very pleased that Leon's work at the CIA will be carried on by one of our leading strategic thinkers and one of the finest military officers of our time, General David Petraeus. The duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. After nearly 40 years in uniform, including leading American and coalition forces in some of the most challenging military missions since 9-11, David Petraeus will retire from the Army that he loves to become the next CIA director, effective early September, pending Senate confirmation. As a lifelong consumer of intelligence, Thanks to President Obama for the confidence uh, in an old soldier. I have had a great retirement. It's been a terrific week. Thanks in advance uh, the tr to the tremendous men and women uh, at the Central Intelligence Agency. Uh, that is a great organization with great people and a great mission. And I am very uh, excited to have the opportunity to join them and indeed to be their director. To lead the agency in its effort to defeat Al Qaeda. In short, just as General Petraeus changed the way that our military fights and wins wars in the 21st century, I have no doubt that Director Petraeus will guide our intelligence professionals as they continue to adapt and innovate in an ever-changing world. The compound in Pakistan where U.S. Special Forces killed Osama bin Laden last May is being demolished. If you look close here, you can see heavy machinery knocking down the walls around the compound and the three-story building where bin Laden had been hiding. A Pakistani official says they didn't want to turn it into a shrine for would-be followers of bin Laden. How about gas prices? Gas prices start going up. We account for 2% of the world's oil reserves but we use 20% of the world's oil. We use 20%, we only got 2%. We can't drill our way out of the problem. That's why we've got to get moving on this clean energy. Uh, at the announcement where I talked about uh, offshore drilling, uh, I did so uh, in front of an F-18, a fighter jet that is actually gonna be run half on biomass. Uh, so I, I was joking with the pilot, I said, so th this thing runs on vegetable oil. Uh, but they're going to break the, the sound barrier using biomass as fuel. So the Pentagon is investing huge amounts in energy efficiency. We are promoting weatherization across the country because this is a win-win situation. You put people to work putting in insulation, putting in windows, most of which, by the way, that insulation and windows is manufactured here in the United States. One of my bottom lines is whether or not credit is flowing to the people who need it. Is it flowing to banks? Uh, is, uh, excuse me. Is it flowing to businesses, large and small? 
Is it flowing to consumers? I know there are some folks in this town who think $40 isn't a lot of money, but to a student or a senior who's trying to stretch the budget a little bit further, to a parent who's filling up the tank and looking at rising gas prices, to them, $40 can make all the difference in the world. Yeah. Okay. Okay. On it like I just signed my record deal. Yeah, the best is here. The Bentley coupe paint is dripping wet. It got sex appeal. Never should have hated. You never should have doubted them. With a slot in the president's iPod, Obama shouted them. Said I handle my biz and I'm one of his favorite rappers. We'll give Luda a special part. And if I'm ever in the slammer. The, the thing about hip hop uh, today is it's smart. I mean, you know, it's it's insightful. You know, and, and they uh, get out and vote or the end will be near and the world is ready for change cause Obama is here yeah. cause Obama is here the world is ready for change cause Obama is here yeah cause Obama is here say the world is ready for change cause Obama is here hey important function is to protect the criminal oligarchs from prosecution while they loot the economy worldwide, start new wars, and engage in torture. When, when I play this for you, what do you think? Let's hear this from a certain somebody who's gone on to have kind of a big job. I gotta say Omar's a great character. <laughs> you know, I mean, no, I don't, I, that's, not, that's, not an, that's not an endorsement. Uh, he can make a national news Exactly. Here. <laughs> that, is, that, is not, that is not an endorsement. He, he is not my favorite person. <laughs> but he's a fascinating character, right? So, and there's a real life. He's, there's he's, a real life story gay, behind him too. Gay, uh, gay uh, gangster who only robs drug dealers and then gives back. You know, he's sort of a Robin Hood, <laughs> and, he, and he's the toughest, baddest guy on the show. But he's gay, you know, and it's really interesting. It's, it's, it's a fascinating character. Yeah. So that was before he became president. But that's Barack Obama talking about the character you played. Wow. Uh, one of the critical ingredients of any effort uh, for peace is my ability to stand in your shoes, mm -hmm. to see through your eyes, to constantly imagine what, what's it like being uh, a mother in Bangladesh right now. And that and, you can always yeah. talk and try to get to some sort of peace. So the president uh, responding there, we're gonna have much, much more. Uh, dig through this and talk to some players about exactly what this means. Uh, what does it mean overseas? What does it mean here in the United States? A lot of people were surprised by this. We're going to talk it out for you so you won't miss it, uh, uh, any of it. Okay, let's move on now because more Americans are needed in Afghanistan. You heard the president said he's trying to bring peace to that region. We're going to have new details on how many and when troops could be going to fight that war. The same people playing us with Obama just gave him a Nobel Peace Prize. You can see the expansion of the wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, and in Pakistan and possibly Iran show this man does not deserve that. We have more more proof that uh, Obama's a fraud and the people behind him are people we should worry about instead of looking at the puppet figure. Peace. What's inspiring about these crowds isn't just their size, but it's the makeup of the crowds. Because they come from all different walks of life. They're young and they're old. They're well-to-do and not so well-to-do. They're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American. They're Democrats. They're independents. And there are even some Republicans. I know this because they uh, whisper to me. They say, Barack, I'm a Republican, but I support you. And I tell them, why are you whispering? Maybe this country has become more divided instead of more unified. And maybe our economic opportunities have shrunk, so only a few people are able to make it uh, into the middle class and we've got a lot of people who are just struggling day to day and not able to live out their American dream. We are going through the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. At the end of the month, taxes are set to go up on 160 million working Americans. If you're one of them, then you know better than anyone that the last thing you need right now is a tax hike. But if Congress refuses to act, middle class taxes will go up. It's that simple. I do think that, for example, the 
80 election was different. I mean, I think Ronald Reagan changed the trajectory of America in a way that, you know, Richard Nixon did not, um, and in a way that Bill Clinton did not. He, he put us on a fundamentally different path because the country was ready for it. I think they felt like, you know, with all the excesses of the 60s and the 70s and, you know, government they had grown and grown, but there wasn't much sense of accountability in terms of how it was operating. And I think, you know, people just tapped in. He tapped into what people were already feeling, which is we want clarity, we want optimism, we want, uh, you know, a return to that sense of dynamism and, and, and you know, uh, uh, entrepreneurship. Barack Obama. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I inhaled uh, frequently. <laughs> that was uh, that was that was the point. If you look at my iPod, you know, it's, it's Earth, Wind, and Fire, Isley Brothers, Temptations. You know, I mean, I've, I've got a lot of that, that old school stuff. So, do you like hip hop? Of course. Who do you like? You know, I gotta admit, uh, lately I've been listening to a lot of Jay-Z. I mean, okay. the, this, this new American gangster. Uh. And it's Obama's job to sucker the public into standing down so the banker's agenda can move forward unhindered. Never before in U.S. history has the media gotten behind a president like they are behind Obama. The press has pulled out all the stops, bestowing a crown of infallibility upon Obama as the savior of the people, the elite are betting everything they've got on Obama's charisma and hoping that he can sell the world on their program of tyranny. Yes, there have been differences between America and Europe. No doubt there will be differences in the future. But the burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. A change of leadership in Washington will not lift this burden. In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. In truth, Obama is not simply continuing George W. Bush's policies. He is radically expanding them. I thank President Bush for his service to our nation. It is the first thing I will do. I will get our troops home. We will bring an end to this war. You can take that to the bank. Well, we are signing the National Day of Renewal and Reconciliation of 2009. <laughs> this is my first official act. I'm a lefty. Get used to it. Um, what would you do at the federal level, not only to ensure access to abortion, but to make sure that the uh, judicial nominees that you will inevitably be able to pick are true to the core tenets of Roe v. Wade? Well, the first thing I'd do as president is, is sign the Freedom of Choice Act. Now, uh, that's the first thing that I'd do. Then I'm absolutely convinced we're not just going to win an election, but more importantly, we're going to transform this nation. Obama ordered the Defense Department to issue DOD Directive 1404.10, establishing a one million person civilian army under his control. Simultaneously, Obama launched USAService.org. The new website deceptively masquerades as a federal agency, but in reality is a recruiting tool building a separate, completely private army outside of government that takes orders directly from Obama's controllers. Barack Obama has refused to rescind Presidential Decision Directive 51, signed by George W. Bush. The directive plainly states that the president is a dictator and that Congress is ceremonial. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, 
just as strong, just as well funded. It's not a side of Rahm Emanuel most people see. This is a guy who's at the top of his game as a Washington power player, someone who knows how to throw an elbow to get ahead. Everybody somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25 will serve three months of basic training and understanding in a kind of civil defense. Now, it doesn't always have to be uh, service in uniform. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. So is this compulsory then? It, well, you have to, uh, in a sense, it's, it's a required of everybody, 18 to 25, three months. Uh, and at some point at that point, you do it. Obviously, I'm not going to say perfect legislation. We'll work that process through. You can do it during a college right. summer. You right. can do it after Any high school. Described affectionately as an attack dog. I know that the president has failed to lead. And Emmanuel started as a political fundraiser. This time, CEOs won't be able to use taxpayer money to pad their paychecks or buy fancy drapes or disappear on a private jet. Those days are over. And the legendary stories that may or may not be true. Like the one about his getting so angry he stabbed a dinner table with a steak knife. And then there's the one about his sending an enemy a dead fish. The kinds of stories Hollywood couldn't resist. We gotta narrow it down to the guy we want. I'm the deputy White House chief of staff in the West Wing series is said to be based on Emmanuel. It's a California gold rush for President Obama. He is expected to rake in four million dollars plus perhaps which will go toward his campaign reelection on a three-day visit to the west coast he's heading to hollywood that we expect uh... one of the president's dear friends in hollywood jamie fox to be there uh... it'll be interesting to see the list of other names there it'll be two of the fundraisers are at the sony Pictures studios to give you a feel of the hollywood feel and uh... the president's campaign expected to rake in a whole lot of dough while there in southern california peter thanks mike So what is Rahm Emanuel really like? We asked his rabbi. He is committed to uh, America, committed to his Judaism, um, and committed to the people around him. And uh, he's very popular in the synagogue. People like him. He's uh, a really um, good man, good man. The legend continues. I'm a historian and the history editor for Executive Intelligence Review. President Obama has put in place a reform apparatus reviving the euthanasia of Hitler Germany in 1939. The apparatus here is to deny medical care to elderly, chronically ill and poor people and thus save, as the president says, two to three trillion dollars. Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel and other avowed cost cutters on this panel also lead a propaganda movement for euthanasia headquartered at the Hastings Center, of which Dr. Emanuel is a fellow. Dr. Emanuel wrote last October 12th that a crisis, war and financial collapse, would get the frightened public to accept the program. Hitler told Dr. Brandt his, in 1935 that the euthanasia program would have to wait until the war began to get the public to go along. Dr. Emanuel wrote last year that the Hippocratic Oath should be junked. Doctors should no longer just serve the needs of the patient. Uh, Hoche and Binding, the German eugenicists, exactly said the same thing to start the killing. I do want to just clarify one thing about my own, uh, since my reputation has been besmirched here, is uh, I think I do have a very long record of writing against the legalization of euthanasia. So the association of me and that seemed a little strange uh, given, I don't know, at least 30 years or 25 years of writing on the topic against the legalization. So just to clarify the record uh, for everyone in the room, thank you. Can we, so, sir, sir, it's a, so it's not a, you, your statement was read into the record, it's not the time for debate, but we appreciate your comments. Uh, you know, when you think about Europe, uh, after World War II, we could have just said, you know, we sent a whole bunch of troops there, we defeated Hitler, now we're broke, we need to go home and take care of our business. 
Instead, what we did was organize the Marshall Plan, which rebuilt not just uh, those countries that had been our allies, but helped to rebuild Germany, Absolutely. which had been our enemy. Absolutely. Did the same thing in Japan. And Throughout history, it has happened over and over again. People turn their intellect over to cult of personality mass movements, and it's happening again. Generation O, and they were the key to Barack Obama's White House win. During the campaign, Barack Obama used the internet like no other candidate before him, harnessing the energy of millions of his supporters. But the question now is, what to do with this young, eager, energetic army? This gives Barack Obama and his administration contact information for so many people, so next time he needs to push his legislation, he can contact all these people. Kennedy-esque. I feel as though this was like when John F. Kennedy was elected. Shouting, smiles, and tears. It was the scope of Obama's victory that was most impressive. Yeah, you know, we see the internet and live feeds and YouTube, and, and that means that nobody around the world should be a stranger. Sorry, I'm kind of nervous. We have the President of the United States here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Facebook, for hosting this, first of all. Uh, we're seeing video of the president at Facebook yesterday, part of the outreach to young voters. Uh, obviously, Facebook has a half billion users around the world, and so this is a way to try to energize uh, a base of support for the president as he is in full re-election mode, guys. You know, after a town hall meeting in Reno today, the president heads to Los Angeles for three fundraisers, likely to have a kind of a Hollywood feel. Stop flapping your gums and put them through. And in the HBO series Entourage, the character of the Hollywood agent, Ari Gold, is said to be based on Ari Emanuel, Rom's powerful brother. And now they have orchestrated an Occupy Wall Street. Everybody fell for it. Obviously, I've, I've heard of it. I've seen it on television. I think it expresses the frustrations that the American people feel. The, the protesters uh, are giving voice to a more broad-based frustration about how our financial system works. And if there's one thing that has unified Democrats and Republicans and everybody in between, it's that we all hated the bank bailout. I hated it. <laughs> how about the, what's going on in the streets of Occupy Wall Street? Yeah. Uh, complaining about the unfairness, railing against Wall Street. The president has sympathized with those protesters in the street. Is, is demonizing Wall Street the way to create an environment to get the banks to hire? Is this not a reverse Tea Party tactic? No, it's not. But here's, here's what I think you, you First see. First black member. Barack Obama found himself in the midst of the protests. Wall Street loves Obama. Obama's Wall Street's best friend. Speak up if you disagree. So you have an Obama 2008 shirt on, but did you know that Obama had historic campaign contributions from Wall Street, from the very bankers? Uh, what's your question? Did you know that? Why, yeah, should we that? why should you support Obama when he's in bed with these very banksters? Obama saved this country. Obama is the, this, uh, the, le the left hand on the, the same puppet as Get Bush. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here, asshole. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, you're a fucking asshole. Yeah. You know that? You're a fucking asshole. Yeah. Stress on people's lives. They, too, need help. Not a bailout, but a chance to get the economy moving for them. And that's an understandable sense of frustration on their part. And it's not just limited to the Wall Street. Go in Europe. Go in Asia. Go other places. There is a major restructuring going on in the world's economy, major here in the United States. And that's why we must pursue a new beginning among people of different faiths and races and religions, one based upon mutual interest and mutual respect. History repeats because nobody knows history, and so I think people got to actually look at the root of these problems. Last question, gentlemen. What should people do about the Obama phenomena? About the uh, the Obama phenomena? What would you do with the money, Mr. President? You know, I think the Obama phenomenon 
is and has been exposed. I mean, especially with the help of you know films like o Obama Deception with Alex Jones, and um, and you just look at his record now. You know, everything he said in the campaign, he's flipped on, flip flopped on. So with Academy Award level conviction, he said that he was upset about the banker bailout, which his own chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, another former Wall Street executive, had engineered. Obama said that he had signed an executive order capping the CEO salaries of those who had taken the bailout money. There was just two problems. All the major banks and brokerage firms were exempt, and the new order only dealt with any future bailouts. And those were to be on the honor system. What gets people upset, and rightfully so, are executives being rewarded for failure. The real war is being fought abroad. They would have us fight culture wars here at home. But I am absolutely convinced that culture wars are just so 90s. Their days are growing dark. It is time to turn the page. We want a new day here in America. We're tired about arguing about the same old stuff. And we should be able to agree now that it makes no sense for China to have better rail systems than us and Singapore having better airports than us and uh, we just learned that uh, China now has the fastest supercomputer on earth that used to be us they're making investments because they know those investments will pay off over the long term we can still invest in uh, something uh, we call ARPA E uh, which is like DARPA except just focused on energy right here I'm concerned that your decision to allow offshore drilling uh, could have the effect of chilling investment into alternate sources of energy. And I'm interested in what incentives you're going to be proposing to establish the conditions and to stimulate uh, research and development and expansion of that critical sector. So we invested in wind, we invested in solar, we invested in biomass, we invested in research and development, we invested in commercialization, uh, we invested in battery technologies I have a general rule which is that if whatever he asked me about my advice and whatever I say should become public only if he decides to make it public he can say whatever he wants but what we, we uh, <laughs> here's what I'll say is uh, I've been keeping the first lady waiting for about half an hour so I'm gonna take off but, I, uh, I don't want to make her mad please go you're in good hands and, uh, and Gibbs will call last question yeah, help thank me you. thank you uh, yeah uh, go ahead Mr. President uh, is there anything else that there are those who suggest that Afghanistan is another Vietnam. They argue that it cannot be stabilized, and we're better off cutting our losses and rapidly withdrawing. I believe this argument depends on a false reading of history. This time, CEOs won't be able to use taxpayer money to pad their paychecks or buy fancy drapes or disappear on a private jet. Those days are over. We will go forward with the confidence that right makes might. To those who claim to power through corruption and deceit and the silencing of dissent, know that you are on the wrong side of history, but that we will extend a hand if you are willing to unclench your fist. I am both surprised and deeply humbled by the decision of the Nobel Committee. What the cynics fail to understand is that the ground has shifted beneath them. And I know that throughout history, the Nobel Peace Prize has not just been used to honor specific achievement, it's also been used as a means to give momentum to a set of causes. Mark Ryan, it will not be six months before the world tests Barack Obama like it did John Kennedy. I guarantee you. In the last few minutes, we have learned that late last night, the president signed an emergency declaration saying that the H1N1 flu virus has now reached the status of a national emergency. And most importantly, we need everyone to get informed about individual risk factors, and we need everyone to take the common sense steps that we know can make a difference. Stay home if you're sick. Wash your hands frequently. Cover your sneezes with your sleeve not your hands, and take all the necessary precautions. 
And these emergency powers that were declared, uh, they, they can actually quarantine people in large numbers and say, you either do it or not, else we'll put you here and we'll inoculate everybody. I think that the vaccine is the pandemic. Bottom line. For the American Revolution did not end when the British guns fell silent. It was never something to be won only on a battlefield or fulfilled only in our founding documents. It was not simply a struggle to break free from empire and declare independence. The American Revolution was and remains an ongoing struggle in the minds and hearts of the people to live up to our founding creed. Say they're trying to uh, make it easier to go across the border, but with Mexico and the U.S., trying to make it harder, build the border up. Yeah, a lot of stuff, uh, drug uh, problems are right now in the U.S.-Mexico border. So, so we'll see what happens later on. So, so do some research on the uh, Fast and the Furious operation. Eric Holder, uh, Attorney General of the U.S., Barack Obama, and a lot of guns going to Mexican drug cartels. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, I guess they want to improve, improve that. So. So they can get all three of our countries in together properly so that all the goods can go up and down with no, uh, no problem. We are deeply honored. President Obama has chosen Canada for his first foreign visit since taking office. Uh, I came to Canada on my first trip as president to underscore the closeness and importance of the relationship between our two nations and to reaffirm the commitment of the United States to work with friends, and partners to meet the common challenges of our time. As neighbors, we are so closely linked that uh, sometimes we may have a tendency to take our relationship for granted. And I'm looking forward to coming back to Canada as soon as it warms up. <laughs> to Her Majesty the Queen, to the vitality of the special relationship between our peoples, and in the words of Shakespeare, to this blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England, to the Queen. Obama and him getting the Peace Prize and him being a world celebrity now and leader of the world. I will accept this award as a call to action, a call for all nations to confront the common challenges of the 21st century. Art can't just be a rear view mirror. Right. You know, it should have a headlight out there. You know, so, so hip -hop pointing to where we need to go. Needs to have the audacity of hope. Audacity of hope. <laughs> he told them that he had written two books the acclaimed 1995 memoir, Dreams for My Father, and the 2006 Audacity of Hope by himself. Not everyone agrees. There's been a long controversy about Obama's first book. Who wrote it? Do you have any doubt in your mind whether or not the President of the United States wrote his book? I have no doubt that Bill Ayers was the primary craftsman behind Dreams for My Father. His name is William Ayers. You used it. Billy Ayers of the weather people. Not a casual acquaintance, but he's not Barack Obama's generation. He's more a mentor to Barack Obama. They've known each other at least since 95. Bill Ayers and his wife Bernadine Dorn were principals in Barack Obama's first run for the state senate. In fact, they found a meet the candidate dinner. A meeting at their home in 1995. They've served together on a critical phil philanthropy in, sh in Chicago, the Woods Fund. They've given money to important people in Chicago. They know each other a long time. Bill Ayers was on the New York Times on September 11th, quoted as saying there was an eloquence to bombs. He's not an attractive character for a president to hang out with without answering what he learned from Bill Ayers all those years serving together. Weather Underground Organization, which took credit for the bombing, 
is the same radical group which was responsible for the bombing of the U.S. Capitol in 1971 and the Pentagon in 1972. But the relationship between Obama and Ayers went much deeper, ran much longer, and was much more political than Obama said. A guilt by association. The pattern of behavior and is that you feel very comfortable for some reason in far left precincts. That's the pattern of behavior that I've I got, see. But I, Bill, I've got friends who are who are on the far right. Who? They're, I've got colleagues who? in the Senate. Give me a name. Well, no, no, no. I always do that. No, no, no. I, I'm no, no, sorry. No, no, but, but, but here's what happens is if I give a name, then people, then the next thing I'll know is people will say, they're comparing this friend of his you know what I want to, to hear? Bill Ayers. And I, I go golfing with Rush Limbaugh. That's what I want to hear there. As to Bill Ayers, he knows the two books had two different authors. I think the first book is very good. The second book's more of a political hack book. But uh, the first book's quite good. How long? I wrote it. It's a, What's that? I wrote the page. Yeah, we know. You wrote that? Yeah, if you could help me prove it, I'll split the royalties. <laughs> the media, of course, treated Ayers' comments as a joke. But as Ayers knew, the story was leaking out. Okay, you, you do not believe that Obama wrote his own book. Wait, I have your tweet. You said, I'm sold Jack Cashel's compelling it's arguments a, on authorship yes. of Obama's book. The president's autobiography, uh, Dreams from My Father, mm -hmm. was actually written by, quote, I'm quoting, the domestic terrorist Bill Ayers. Yes. Bill Ayers helped yes. with his book, right. and you actually pick up, you found the literary devices and themes bear a jarring similarity to Ayers' own writings. A former merchant seaman, Ayers had a particular love for the language of the sea. The book is a totally landlocked book. There aren't two paragraphs spent in or near the sea. The words that I'm going to read for you all appear in, usually in metaphorical context, or in the middle of Chicago or something, okay? Here are the following words that are shared between Barack Obama's Dreams from My Father and Bill Ayers' three books. I'm going to read them quickly. Hang on. Fog, mist, ships, sinking ships, seas, sails, boats, oceans, comms, captains, charts, first mates, floods, shores, storms, streams, wind, waves, waters, anchors, barges, horizons, harbors, bays, ports, panoramas, moorings, tides, currents, voyages, narrower courses, uncertain courses, and things howling, wobbling, fluttering, sinking, leaking, cascading, swimming, knotted, ragged, tangled, boundless, uncharted, turbulent, and murky. That's a coincidence. As Christopher Anderson affirmed, it was not a coincidence. A celebrity biographer with impeccable mainstream credentials, Anderson interviewed hundreds of Obama friends and reported that, at Michelle's urging, a hopelessly blocked Obama sought advice from his friend and Hyde Park neighbor, Bill Ayers. What attracted the Obamas were Ayers' proven abilities as a writer. Noting that Obama had already taped interviews with many of his relatives, Anderson elaborates. These oral histories, along with his partial manuscript and a trunkload of notes, were given to Ayers. The result was what Time magazine would call the best written memoir ever produced by an American politician. Two problems. One was that Obama did not write this memoir. The second, and perhaps more important, was that the story told therein was not true. So many conspiracy theories, so little time. This is a small group of nutty people, okay? To prevent the truth from spreading, the media could do no more than attack as wackos or birthers or racists, those who defended Cashel's thesis. Because this is what America is all about. Everybody from different places enjoying uh, those things that bind us together. And I, it's wonderful to spend time with you guys. I hope you have a great time. The president also went outside to enjoy the warm spring weather. Transformation in the head, transformation in the heart, and then transformation on the street. But I do think that we sometimes get into a trick bag where we're supposed to be somehow pristine and precious, and somebody like Barack Obama, who drone strikes and kills American citizens, is saying, you know, I, uh, I, I want you all to be nonviolent. Well, I want you to be nonviolent. How about that? They know each other personally. They all come from the same group. They are all communists. 
You'd think that this thing was uh, some Bolshevik plot. One of the characters in this book is this guy, Frank Marshall Davis, who's the leading black communist in Honolulu. And he's also mentioned the U.S. president's memoir, except he doesn't mention his full name. And it is, you know, I helped to amass this, this relationship, which, of course, has the right wing. They're, they're hysterical, you know, because now they say that Obama's the Manchurian candidate. You know, <laughs> the Kremlin's man in the White House. <laughs> actually, some of the, some of the uh, more hysterical blogs say that Frank Marshall Davis is actually his father. <laughs> actually, I even read one of the blogs that said I was his father. <laughs> they lived in Indonesia. I think uh, the, like, uh, Obama's father actually uh, died or something like that. So his mother uh, married an Indonesian, Lolo Satoro. So, yeah, that's him when he was a... Uh, uh, a baby, Barack Obama, a.k.a. Uh, Barry Satoro. That's his real name that he uses. I don't think his wife, uh, Michelle, uses uh, uh, Barack. I think she uses Barry as his uh, name. Because he phoned into a radio show, and uh, it was funny, and uh, the host of the show said, uh, well, we'll go to the phones, and we got Barry on the line from D.C. And it was actually Obama on the other end. It was so funny, it was so funny right? We have uh, Barry from D.C. is calling. Go ahead, Barry. Well, uh, Governor Kane, this is uh, actually the President of the United States calling. Uh, no. I, I, you know, I oh, my have gosh. questions about, uh, <laughs> about traffic in northern Virginia. Talking about traffic and stuff like that, eh? So, yeah, it's pretty interesting, yeah, for sure. So, he grew up in Indonesia, and I believe that he was born in, the, in Africa, right? So, we can't be too sure, but... I believe that he was born in, the, in Kenya and moved into in Indonesia, I guess. Can you please say uh, the full last name for Mr. Obama on his mother's passport record? Uh, Subarka, S-O-E-B-A-R-K-A-H. Do you know Barack Obama's real name? They go, uh, no. Uh, and I say, well, it's actually Barry Satoro when he was nine years old. So, yeah, there he is. Well, there you go. Now, people that are talking about this kind of stuff have been labeled in the media as birthers, as the name, and uh, people talking about, you know, Barack Obama's birth certificate. Now, do you believe that this document exists? Uh, does Barack Obama have a birth certificate? What, what do you think? I believe that he does have a birth certificate, but he doesn't want to show anybody. It's all been hidden. Birth certificate's been called into question. For, from the very beginning, Obama wouldn't show the original birth certificate. He produced a short-form certification of live birth. And then on April 27th, just before my book was going to come out, the White House suddenly releases uh, this long-form birth certificate. I think it started during the campaign. And I have to say that over the last two and a half years, I have watched with uh, bemusement. I've been puzzled at the degree to which this thing just kept on going. Under Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution, either because his father was a Kenyan and that made Barack Obama a dual citizen at birth, not a natural born citizen, or because the birth certificate was forged and false, and Obama, there's no proof Obama was born in Hawaii. We've posted the uh, certification that is given by the state of Hawaii on the internet for everybody to see. The White House released an electronic file. And as soon as you opened the electronic file, you could see that it had layers in it. It was electronically created. If we just make stuff up and pretend that facts are not facts, we're not going to be able to solve our problems if we get distracted by sideshows and carnival barkers. As soon as that April 27th, the White House released the birth certificate, the media said, Okay, nothing to see here. Now let's all move on. They didn't question, is this a legitimate document? Why have we waited three years to see it? Why can't we see the original documents that remain hidden away in Hawaii, the original birth documents? Why do we have all these contradictory reports? The governor said there was only a line item entry in the index of births in Hawaii on Obama's birth. If the governor looked for this long-form birth certificate, why didn't the governor find it? I think increasingly the evidence is mounting that this long-form birth certificate is a forged document, which means ultimately 
a felony was committed in the White House on behalf of Obama, and the mainstream media is covering it up. What did you investigate the uh, identification records <coughs> for Mr. Obama? Um, I was hired to look at his background, and the first thing I found was a social security number for him that was issued in the state of Connecticut between years of 1977 and 79. So and, during uh, that time, Mr. Obama would have been 15, 16 years old. Where did he reside? Uh, did he reside in the state of Connecticut at the age of 15 or 16? No. Where did he reside? Hawaii. Now, uh, um, and social security numbers are issued in the state that you live in when you apply for them. Now, uh, do the first three digit of social security number signify the state? Yes. So, 042 is what state? It's Connecticut. 040 to 049 is Connecticut. Ms. Daniels, I would like to point to those numbers at the bottom. Right. Dates of birth associated with social security number. And we see the first day of birth is 1890. Uh, in all the years I've worked, I've never seen anything like this. I've seen where like, the bottom two numbers where the American style and the foreign style appear, but never a number like 1890. And I believe that, that the person that originally got the social security number was born in 1890. So what you're saying is that it was a stolen social security yeah, number? Don't be uh, I believe that I, Okay. Uh, what, what, what is your understanding? What does it mean? Um, I believe from the beginning it was fraudulent. Yes. Now there's a court record for the first time. It's historic. Both in Obama's case and for a U.S. sitting president. First time their eligibility has been questioned substantively in a court hearing. And without the president or his attorney presenting arguments, if the judge makes a decision... Hopefully that decision will be on substantive grounds now, not just a default. Did, did you also check Mr. Obama's phone records? Um, first, I, I, I ran the social security number to check the addresses. And um, the same social security number came up with addresses for him in Massachusetts, in Illinois, and in Washington, D.C. And, and, uh, and along with those records were a, a phone number, and it was always the same phone number, and occasionally the year where it showed his date of birth, it said 1890. I, I subsequently then checked the phone records for this phone number and found the same thing. It would show intermittently the birth date instead of August 4th, 1961, it said 1890. I know that uh, there's going to be a segment of people for which, no matter what we put out, uh, this issue will not be put to rest. But I'm speaking to the vast majority of the American people, uh, as well as to the press. We do not have time for this kind of silliness. We got better stuff to do. I've got better stuff to do. We got big problems to solve. And I'm confident we can solve them, but we're going to have to focus on them, not on this. Thanks very much, everybody. Because Barack Obama cannot stand for American people to know the truth, which is he's not a natural-born citizen. He gave up his citizenship, natural-born citizenship, when he was adopted in Indonesia. His father was Kenyan, which should have disqualified him from the beginning. And he's lied about being born in Hawaii. So the entire... Public life of Barack Obama is nothing but a lie. Because he knows where he's born. He, he's not eligible to be president. He's supposed to be naturally born in the United States to be president. He's like uh, Prime Minister uh, Stephen Harper. He's, uh, he's a Bilderberger. Enlightened sovereignty. To be president or prime minister, you've got to be a Bilderberger or born in the United States. So, yeah. So they're trying to cover that all up. He's a, he's a fraud. If you're, if you're not supposed to be president, everything that you sign is a fraud. Obviously a fraud. You cannot do that. So if Barack Obama can become president, 
Wouldn't that, uh, wouldn't that mean that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger could actually become president as well? You know, we don't want him to become president. That's why I like Would to you talk like about the presidential. Would you like if they change it? Would you run if they had changed that law? Oh, without any doubt. Yeah. There's no two ways about that. Yeah, absolutely. Alpha and Omega on a Schwarzenegger will be president. Even though there's marijuana smoking footage evidence, they'll make it legal. They'll make it choose between now, the lesser evils. Uh, when it comes to medical marijuana, I, I, I have more of a practical view than anything else. I mean, my attitude is, is that <clears throat> if, uh, if it's an issue of doctors prescribing medical marijuana as a uh, treatment for glaucoma or as a cancer treatment, uh, I think that should be appropriate because there really is no difference between that and a doctor prescribing morphine or anything else. Look, I, you know, I, uh, when I was a kid, I, I, uh, I inhaled uh, frequently. <laughs> That was, uh, that, was, that was the point. I think there are legitimate concerns in not wanting to allow uh, people to grow their own or start setting up mom and pop shops uh, because at that point it becomes fairly difficult to, to regulate. Uh, the war on drugs has been an utter failure. The basic concept that uh, using uh, medical marijuana in the same way with the same controls as other drugs prescribed by doctors, I think that's entirely appropriate. Okay. Federal law, of course, still still considers it a controlled substance, right. and there have been attempts from from Washington to punish doctors. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I would not punish doctors if it's prescribed in a way that. Uh, is appropriate uh, that may require some changes in federal law. Um, I, will, I will tell you that, uh, you know, I mean, I want to be honest with you, whether I want to use a whole lot of political capital on that issue <laughs> when we're trying to get health care passed or end the war in Iraq uh, is, uh, you know, the likelihood of that being real high on my, on my list is, is uh, is not likely. Today's top stories, federal agents have raided several marijuana dispensaries in King, Pierce, and Thurston counties. Today, in the White House, there are three members of the Muslim Brotherhood that influence Obama's policy. One is Rashad Hassan, of Indian origin, who is the American ambassador to the 52-nation organization of Islamic countries. Dalia Mujahid, who writes his speech, who comes from the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. Just day before yesterday, another woman, an academic, was appointed in that circle. This is happening while we sit silent. And I say that as a liberal Democrat, as someone who worked and campaigned for Barack Obama. We have evidence. People act like the campaign was easy. They weren't on the campaign. <laughs> they all look back, oh, you know, Obama, he ran such a perfect campaign. It was so smooth. What campaign were you on? <laughs> This was hard. Visit AfricanAmericans.BarackObama.com for more information about all the ways you can get involved, from attending HBCU organizing workshops to becoming a congregation captain. And say you're ready to keep making history. Thanks, and see you out there. I saw a photograph of Obama playing basketball. And I said, you know what? I see him as a leader. And that's the world that's in his hands. Own a piece of history, commemorating the day the world changed forever. Uh, we already had uh, a big deficit that I inherited. Uh, and that has been made worse because of the recession. That our economy is grinding to a halt. And, and our planet, uh, because we didn't adjust from fossil fuels, uh, has gone up two or three degrees and the polar ice caps have melted and the oceans uh, have gone up uh, and suddenly our ways of life have changed and America uh, is is no longer uh, what it it could be what it once was for those of you who are concerned about climate change nuclear energy doesn't produce greenhouse gases 
It's not a perfect energy source because it's got the problem with spent fuel and how that is properly stored. But generally speaking, that's going to have to be part of our energy mix. We'll start by sending astronauts to an asteroid for the first time in history. By the mid-2030s, I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth. And a landing on Mars will follow. And I expect to be around to see it. Two years of corporate love and nine months of give them a chance later. This award is not simply about the efforts of my administration. It's about the courageous efforts of people around the world. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Uh, it's pretty neat that he was elected the same, I mean, got that right uh, around the same time that they bombed the moon. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> they bombed the moon? I didn't hear about this. Yes, what happened? It hasn't happened to any president in history. So we're standing by for that. You're not going to miss any of it. We'll bring it to you live right here on CNN. In the meantime, did you check out space today? NASA banged into the moon today, and they did it on purpose. Scientists hope to kick up a dust prime in their search for moon water there. Uh, well, yesterday, they, NASA they, bombed the moon, and then uh, Obama uh, gets the peace prize. Well, look, uh, uh, and, and NASA is a U.S. government agency. And NASA scientists say they've got a lot of data, but will not say what it all means, at least not yet. So we have the data we need to actually address the questions we sent out to address. And Obama's president of the U.S., but they gave Kissinger a Nobel Peace Prize for bombing Cambodia, so <laughs> it's no surprise. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's the usual, you know, double speak where it means the opposite. So really it's, you know, war prize or whatever you want to call it. Let me be clear. I do not view it as a recognition of my own accomplishments, uh, but rather as an affirmation of American leadership on behalf of aspirations held by people in all nations. The last president before you failed us. We need your leadership. I will take this past the president. I'll go to Mars. I'll do a press conference on Venus. The American people will know. RonaldTruthSeekers.com When they have to be faced with the truth. Reptilian side of our brain. There are some uh, brave people, like maybe you here today, who are at least open to hear something that, that may not it may conflict with what you believe or what you know, but at least you're truth seekers. That's what I have always been as a truth seeker. Reptilian side of our brain, right? A, 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 the, that, that part of our brain that if somebody looks different or sounds different, that there's a part of us that is cautious. And what we have to do is fight against I understand that. that some believe that we should attempt a return to the surface of the moon first, as previously planned. But I, I just have to say, uh, pretty bluntly here, we've been there before. Buzz has been there. There's a lot more of space to explore and a lot more to learn when we do. So I believe it's more important to ramp up our capabilities to reach and operate at a series of increasingly demanding targets while advancing our technological capabilities with each step forward. And that's what this strategy does. Saturn and his new world order better wake up. It inspires me and gets me up every day. This is what we should be focusing on uh, in our public debates. Uh, and as for all the folks who are here, don't, uh, don't let your robots wander off anywhere. All right? ...about national strategies to nurture and sustain a culture of scientific innovation. In addition to John, sorry, the, the, uh, I just noticed that uh, I, I jumped the gun here. Go ahead and move it up. I had already, already introduced all you guys. In biomedicine. My administration has taken several precautions to address the challenge posed by the 2009 H1N1 flu virus. Today I'd like to take a few minutes to explain why. This is a new strain of the flu virus. And because we haven't developed an immunity to it, it has more potential to cause us harm. Unlike the various strains of animal flu that have emerged in the past, it's a flu that's spreading from human to human. This creates the potential for a pandemic. 
We've asked every American to take the same steps you would take to prevent any other flu. Keep your hands washed, cover your mouth when you cough, stay home from work if you're sick, and keep your children home from school if they're sick. I think that the vaccine is the pandemic. The good news is that the current strain of H1N1 can be defeated by a course of antiviral treatment that we already have on hand. We began this week with 50 million courses of this treatment in the strategic national stockpile. We then purchased an additional 13 million treatments to refill our strategic stockpile. Out of an abundance of caution, I've also asked Congress for $1.5 billion, if it's needed, to purchase additional antivirals, emergency equipment, and the development of a vaccine that can prevent this virus as we prepare for the next flu season in the fall. Obama must convincingly play the part of the president and convince the people of the United States that the buck actually stops with him. This is critical to the globalist master plan because in four to eight years, Obama must take the blame, as Bush did, for the New World Order's horrific agenda. At that point, the elite will put a new puppet in the ceremonial seat of power and build him up as the savior, only to tear them down again. And so the process is repeated over and over. You know, if, if all we're doing is spending and we're not making things, then over time, other countries are going to get tired of lending us money. And eventually, the party is going to be over. Well, in fact, the party now is over.